Hey guys, welcome to the Aspen Plus Physical Properties course. And this video is just to let you know what we're going to cover, a very general overview of the course. And I'm going to break this into 10 sections, essentially the sections which the course covers. The first one is introduction. We see why is it important, what are we, we going to cover, course objectives, uh, requirements, the license we need, the version we need, etc. Then we pass to section number two, which is the component specification. And as the name implies, we need to learn what's a component for Aspen Plus, the typical components, which is conventional, solids, non-conventional, etc. We're going to cover mostly conventional and uh, non-conventional components. Then we pass to component groups. Then we finish this section with the component databases. That is what type of databases are included in Aspen Plus. Why are they useful? Which one are okay? Which one might you prefer to use? And we pass to the third section. Is the property method. This is the most important one of all. This is the basis of the simulation environment. That is, you need to set up a good property method using the components in order to start your simulation. It's very, very, very important to get this and I know this, is, um, this might be the most boring one, or the boring part, the theoretical part, mathematical models, uh, thermodynamics, equilibrium stuff. Maybe it's not that nice, but I try to do it with plenty of workshops so you can not only study theory, but also apply it. Now, we cover property methods, which one are the recommended selection guides, the method assistance, ideal based, the activity coefficient based ones, the equation of state based ones, and also the recommended for special uh, applications. Then we continue with the study of parameters, which is uh, the, let's say, the values required for Aspen Plus to use models and to give a result. Let's say, what are the parameters we need in order to get the viscosity of that liquid at that pressure? Well, you need to have initial parameters you need to use a model and you get the result. Now, talking about that, that is actually a root. You have a parameter, you use a model or maybe even various models, and you have a set of equations and the final result gives you a specific value. The routes or let's say the pathways are called these. How do I get this? How do I get to know how I calculated, well, Aspen Plus calculated the vapor fraction? How does it calculate the viscosity? Well, you check out the routes and go back and see how it was calculated. Then, after waiting for this section, you finish it. I really recommend you to take it slow, uh, section number three, because it's very uh, how is it, extensive. Then comes property sets, which is one of the shortest sections of all. It's essentially showing the properties which are not included in Aspen Plus directly. Many times Aspen Plus will show you enthalpy, temperature, vapor fraction, etc. But maybe if you're studying heat exchange, you will want to show the, let's say, the viscosity in order to calculate Reynolds number. Or maybe you want to calculate the conductivity of the material. Or if you're studying equilibriums, you may, you may want to study maybe the fugacity coefficient, gamma coefficients. Uh, activity coefficients, and so on. You can do this in the section number four. Then comes section number five, which is also very interesting because we are going to work a lot with this, is the analysis tools. The tools are made up for the studying analysis of pure components, for binary mixtures, ternary uh, systems, in which we have, of course, three components, and overall mixtures, if we have three, four, five, or even more. So this is very important. I'm not going to explain it so detailed, but we are going to cover mostly binary systems. Then comes uh, section number six, which is data and regression. As the name implies, we're going to identify the ways in which we can input data or import data from other databases and use regression to know if our data is relevant and if we can use a model and get parameters. And of course, the goal is to have a very smooth model with very low sums of squares. Then comes section number seven, which is property estimation. As the name implies, we're going to estimate properties which are missing 
uh, in Aspen Plus. Let's say if you just added a medical component, a pharma component, and Aspen Plus will not have the parameters. So we need to estimate those, especially if you're going to work in a simulation with that. Well, you cannot just assume it's a solid or assume it's similar to that. The best idea is to estimate the properties via the several ways we're going to cover here. Okay. Then comes section number eight, which is one of my favorite ones because we apply all what we have learned into thermodynamic applications. We do a lot of analysis, regressions, estimation of parameters on vapor liquid, liquid liquid, vapor liquid liquid equilibriums. We study, we test models, the equation of state versus activity models, the ideal model versus equation of state and vice versa. We try to cover what we have seen, not only lead it on theory, we want to cover it uh, on practice. And then finally comes section number nine, which is case studies. As the name implies, we are going to study some cases, flash separation, liquid liquid extraction, and the distillation units. You know that all these are equilibrium based, so it's very important to choose the model and the components. So you will understand after watching and studying all previous sections, why do we need the property methods in order to apply this? Finally, we make a conclusion and yeah, I recommend you further courses for training, right? Because this is actually, I will recommend this after taking a basic course, then comes the physical properties if you are into that and eventually you want to apply it to distillation or maybe to reactor engineering, or to a separation unit, or maybe a fractionation column, etc. Okay, so that's everything for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy the course. Whatever doubt you may have, just let me know and send me a message, an email, or whatever way you have to contact me, and I will be there to help you guys. See you in the next lectures.